should not breed or increase, then that she should be sold at the end of eight years. The eight years have passed. Leah has not bred or had increased, but Patty's guardian, Samuel Chambers, refuses to permit Leah to be sold, pretending that she is rightfully the property of his ward. Botkin asks the court to decree that Leah be sold and that Chambers account for her hire from the time Patsy reached eight. I'm trying to tell you, boy, this is some realistic stuff right here. You know, Bernard Rogers states that his father, Joseph, executed a will in which he left his estate, which included land and 50 to 60 slaves to his wife, Susan, during her lifetime. Joseph's children from a previous marriage filed suit to have themselves declared heirs as well, but the suit failed. Bernard claims they then frightened Susan into agreeing to a division of the estate, taking advantage of his infancy. Subsequently, Henry Rogers sold some of the slaves, although they had been in Joseph Rogers' possession for a long time. And some of the men had wives and the women had husbands and all of them kindred among the other slaves, yet all these ties were torn asunder. Bernard asked that the defendants be restrained from removing or selling any more of the slaves, that they be compelled to account for all slaves sold and finally, that all the slaves be returned and their hire be accounted for. Mm, mm, mm. So I'm gonna get to, let me see. I'm gonna show y'all the one that I saw. Let's see, let's see. It was about, uh, Which one was that? Oh, right to assemble. 16, so this is Delaware, 1825. 16 citizens seek a law prohibiting persons of color from assembling at the polls during general elections. So this is 1825. 1825, okay, citizens means white people or racist suspects because we know that because of the Dred Scott decision, they did not count us or include us as citizens before the uh, 13th and 14th amendments were added. So we have 16 citizens seek a law prohibiting persons of color. <laughs> so look, we know that people of color or persons of color is not a term that we made up. From assembling at the polls during general elections, the petitioners claim that persons of color assemble at the several places where the general elections of this state are held on the days of holding said elections to the great annoyance and inconvenience of the electors who assemble to exercise their right of suffrage and by fighting, quarreling, and other notorious unlawful behavior tend to interrupt the propriety of said elections, thereby encouraging vice and immorality which said abuses demand a speedy and effectual remedy. The petitioners pray that a law be passed prohibiting said persons of color to assemble at the place of holding said elections on the day said elections are held under pain of said punishment. Now, what does this mean? 1825, these citizens didn't want these persons of color to learn what assembling with the general elections were, they didn't want them to learn about the elections. That's, to me, that's obvious. They did not want these people, these persons of color, these victims of racism to be there on election day. They didn't want them to witness 
white people uh, arguing. They didn't want to witness white people fighting and quarreling and other notorious Allah. They didn't want white people, uh, black people to see white people doing that. Look at this one, 55 citizens seek a law prohibiting, or oh, they didn't want black people to see white people doing that. I think that's what I said, but 55 citizens seek a law prohibiting persons of color from assembling at the polls during general elections. This is this, another one. That's 55 persons, oh, see, I see. So 16, then it became 55, then it was 20, let's see down here is 25, much disturbed by rumors of intended insurrectionary movements. Look at this. This is 1831. Um, for, what's that, four years before Nat Turner's Rebellion, I believe? Yeah, this, this is much, 25 citizens much disturbed by rumors of intended insurrectionary movements among the black portion of our population asked that several measures be taken to quiet the excitement. In particular, they target meetings held under the pretense of religious worship and the black preachers who come into this state from other states who are regular and constant preachers of sedition to our slaves and free blacks at their night meetings where no whites are present. This is exactly what Nat, Nat Turner was doing. <laughs> this is what Nat Turner did. Very interesting. So, you know, the, the, the story of Nat Turner would have you believe that it was just him that was doing this. So this is in Delaware. Let's see, when was Nat Turner again? Nat Turner's Rebellion? Uh, wanna be sure, I think it was 1835. August 1831. So in that same year, this was in the same year of Nat Turner's rebellion. And these people are making a petition to stop regular and constant preachers of sedition to our slaves and free blacks at their night meetings where no whites are present. They also believe that the public safety and peace require that it should be declared unlawful for slaves or free blacks to own or possess firearms and other military weapons. All the way in 1831, right? Again, because of the Dred Scott decision, right? The Constitution did not apply. It didn't. It didn't apply to uh, slaves and free blacks as far as possessing the firearms or other military weapons. So, you have many huge numbers of white people today, racist suspects, not all white people, but huge numbers of them who do not want you. This, this, is what they, this is what they believe right now, that the public safety and peace require that it should be declared unlawful. But they, they know right now, because of the 13th, 14th and 15th amendments, your right to possess, to own and possess a firearm is in the Second Amendment. Your right to possess firearms and other military weapons, well, these are, this is assault weapons. 
These, these are the weapons that they call assault weapons, which they've conveniently, uh, you know, I can't say conveniently, but deceptively have gotten huge numbers of black people uh, out there uh, misusing firearms uh, and using assault weapons against each other. Instead of keeping their uh, uh, firearms uh, for self-defense, they're using them to attack each other, okay? I believe that that's heavily influenced from racy, racist propaganda, okay? Um, but, you know, you got so-called people out there who they, they don't think that you should bear firearms. They don't think that you should be entitled to the right to possess firearms. So they try to trick you into believing that you need to be afraid of a firearm. That, you know, a firearm is somehow the possession of a firearm is going to hypnotize you and cause you to, you know, uh, uh, injure someone. But what it is, is your lack of knowledge in gun safety and your lack of knowledge in the laws, which is the Second Amendment. That's your Second Amendment right. Remember, I said the Bill of Rights is the amendments one through 10, which, you know, for centuries did not apply to black people. And you still have people on this, in, in this, you know, part of the world who believe that you're not entitled to those to the Bill of Rights. They believe that the Bill of Rights does not apply to you. But the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were, were added to the Constitution so that the Bill of Rights could apply to you. Okay? And, you know, Amendment number two is a part of the Bill of Rights, your right to bear arms. But this is amazing right here, right here. This is really amazing that we can find this here and it's not even applying. Now it's in Delaware, 1831. So, I mean, they could have uh, heard about what happened in Virginia with Nat Turner and went ahead and decided they was going to establish this, but it doesn't sound like it. Sound, sounds like they, they knew some other black preachers in the state. And they thought that they were going to do this kind of thing or, you know, whatever. But here it goes. Uh, acknowledging that they wish in no way to abridge any privileges which they think can be granted or continue to that unfortunate class of people. The petitioners nonetheless purport that they cannot shut their eyes to the fact that a deep and growing discontent pervades the blacks, not only in this state, but throughout the union, which they fear is assuming a most dangerous aspect. This right here, this, this right here is the whole reason why the Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party, had done to it what was done to it. Okay? This right here, because it was believed that there was going to be a deep down growing discontent, like I said, to these people when they hear uh, a, a black male talking about justice, this is what they think the black male is talking about. And this ain't what we're talking about. But this is a fear. And back then, they admitted it. These days, racism, white supremacy is fine. They, they're not going to admit this to you. You know, they therefore believe the time has fully arrived when it has become the part of prudence to take such precautionary measures as may appear best calculated to avert the threatened danger. Here's another one. So that was 25 citizens. Now this is nine more citizens. This is in 1832. And 1832 again, 
same petition petition Here's another one in 1832 with 10 citizens. Here's another one, 70 citizens in 1832, seven citizens. So, you know, we can do the math on this. We got 10. So, starts off with 25 citizens and you know, 25 plus 9 plus 23 plus 10 plus 70 plus 7 plus 12 plus 18 plus 23. That's, that's plus 23. That's what at least three to four hundred people in Newcastle, three to four hundred white people in Newcastle County that supported this. I mean, and those were just the ones that signed it. I'm pretty sure there was others that uh, believed the same thing. Now, this one says 31 citizens much disturbed by rumors of intended insurrective movements. Oh, this is, wait, this one looks similar. Something's different. I say, they believe the public safety and peace to see the petitioner state that whether in the present ex exited state of public feeling, this should be permitted is submitted to the wisdom of the legislature. So they added this one part to that. So you add another 31 to that, and that's in a different county. That's 31 in Sussex County, Delaware. 31 Dover residents complain that they are much annoyed and put to great inconvenience by nightly assemblages of Negroes and mulattoes in the streets and upon the public square of said town and by the firing off of guns and crackers and the lightning of bonfires within the limits of the said town. Crackers is firecrackers. They further purport that such assemblages frequently lead to riots, fights, and other breaches of peace and always tend to interrupt the harmony and good government of said town. Therefore seek law granting greater powers to local authorities to prevent and suppress such mischief. <laughs> So what is that? What's, what's that look like, y'all? Don't that look like what I was talking about on Sunday? When, a, uh, uh, you know, what they expect, what they expect from a, a, a black person uh, that moves into their town or whatever. Disturbing the peace, huh? Firing off of guns and crackers and the lightning, lighting of bonfires within the limits of said town. They further purport that such assemblages frequently lead to riots, fights, and other breaches of peace and always tend to interrupt the harmony, interrupt the harmony and good government of said town. Suppress the mischief. 51 free persons of color Remember, persons of color means victims of white supremacy, seek to repeal of an act entitled an act to prevent the use of firearms by free Negroes and free mulattoes and for other purposes passed at Dover. So look at this. So here we have 51 free black persons, so-called, right, who filed a petition in 1843 excuse me, against this act to prevent use of firearms by free Negroes and free mulattoes and for other purposes passed. So this that's what all these other ones would, would did was, and it says uh, 31 Dover residents, right? So this is, uh, you know, what? 32, 40, what's that? 11, 
11 years later. So can you imagine what that's like? So you get, uh, you know, one or two black people trying to uh, get a firearm, free black people trying to get a firearm and they're being told, well, uh, you can't possess a firearm because this act uh, was filed and it, you know, it's a law now that you can't carry a firearm, right? And it was passed in Dover, February 10th, 1832, right? Imagine them being told that, and somehow they got the information that they needed to file a petition to repeal the act, okay? They purport that the third and fourth section of the act has operated very much against the free people of color in worshiping their creator according to the dictates of their consciousness, consciousness. So furthermore, some of the petitioners have been unjustly charged with violations of the law and forced to appear in court. They humble pray a repeal of the third and fourth section of the act or such relief as may appear equitable to your honorable bodies. Womp the hell womp. Womp, womp, womp. So it looks like they filed a petition Not for the use of, let me, let me, let me just go ahead and see if we could find this act first. Okay. Cause it's, it sounds like to me, like they made a petition to see if they could worship, right? They purport that the third and fourth section of that act has operated very much against the free people of color and worshiping their creator, according to the dictates of their conscience. Could, could this be like they submitted this petition because they want to, they wanted to be able to go to church? Well, I tell you that Christianity boy, Christianity boy, let me let them, let me, I'm, I'm, right now I'm making a, a hypothesis. I'm making an educated guess that that's what it is. But let's see if we can find this real quick. It says, Act to prevent the use of firearms by Nero. Let's see if we can find that anywhere. Let me type in Delaware. takes us to the same place. Let's see, oh, state of Delaware. Let's see, laws of the, let's see, repeal act, let's see, section six, and be it enacted that the sixth section of the act to whatever, which this is a supplement B, and the same is hereby repealed from and after the fourth day, which time this act shall take effect and be in for the city. Supplement, an act entitled an act to prevent the exportation of flour. Pass the Dover, this is not, oh, huh. see, look, if I had to scroll down, here it is. An act to prevent the use of firearms by free Negroes and free mulattoes and for other purposes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's see, being enacted by Senate and House of Representatives of the State of Delaware and General Assembly, that from and after the first day of June next, it shall not be lawful for free Negroes and free mulattoes to have, own, keep, or possess any gun, pistol, sword, or any warlike instrument whatsoever, provided, however, 
that if upon application of any such free Negro or free mulatto to one of the justices of the peace of the county in which such free Negro or free mulatto resides, it shall satisfactorily appear upon the written certificate of five or more respectable and judicious citizens of the neighborhood that such free Negro or free mulatto is a person of fair character. So you had to get references. If you wanted, they, so they approved it. Where they, you know, they, it looks like they, they went ahead and they approved it. They repelled their right, but told them they got to have basically the approval of five white people, respectable white people, right? Shall satisfactorily appear upon the written certificate of five of more respectable and judicious citizens of the neighborhood that such free Negro or free mulatto is a person of fair character and that the circumstances of his case justify his keeping and using a gun. Then, and in every such case, it shall and may be lawful for such justice to issue a license or permit under his hand and authorizing such free Negro or free mulatto to have use and keep in his possession a gun or, or fouling piece but nothing herein contained shall authorize the issuing of a license or permit to any free Negro or free mulatto to keep and use any sword, pistol, or other warlike instrument. So they couldn't have a sword, a pistol, or other warlike instrument. They could only have a gun, like a long gun, which is a rifle or a shotgun, and they had to have not the good house, the, the, the white man's good housekeeping stamp of approval for one, but five. And it couldn't just be five, any white person, it couldn't just be, you know, just any five white person. They had to be more respectable and judicious citizens of the neighborhood. Interesting and be it further enacted by the authority I've said that from and after the said first day of June next, it shall be the duty of any justice of the peace whenever information shall be given him or it shall otherwise come to his knowledge that any free Negro or free mulatto is in possession of any gun without a license or permit as of for said or any pistol, sword or other warlike instrument to issue his warrant or precept to any constable of the county commanding him forthwith to bring before such justice, such free Negro or free mulatto to answer the charge of offending against the provisions of the first section of this act. And if upon a full hearing, it shall appear by the testimony of one or more competent witnesses that such free Negro or free mulatto is an offender against the provisions of the first section of this act according to the true intent and meaning thereof, he shall be a judge to pay a fine of five dollars to the state for the use of the poor of the county where such proceedings are had. Whew. This is, um, hey, this, this, is, this right here, you wanna know how come there's an issue with, with, with us having guns? This, this, is, this is where it's rooted at right here. And be it further enacted by the authority after said that from and after the first day of June next, no congregation or meeting of free Negroes or free mulattoes consisting of more than 12 persons assembled for the purpose of religious worship or for any other purpose or pretense what's whatever shall be held or continued longer than the hour of 10 o'clock in the night season unless said meeting is held or continued under the direction of three respectable white men who shall be present during the whole duration of such assemblage or meeting after the said hour of 10 o'clock in the night season. Every free Negro or free mulatto offending against the provisions of this section shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and shall forfeit any pay a forfeit and pay a fine of $10 for every such offense to be recovered 
by indictment with cost of persecution and upon failure to pay such fine and cost every such fine.